We all know the dangers of tanning to get that bronze glow, but could a new DIY trend to lighten one's complexion be toxic as well? Could glutathione be the holy grail for people seeking a lighter and brighter complexion? Often used as a cancer treatment, a myriad of glutathione products can be purchased online. Some are hailed magic potions that one injects directly into their own skin. The FDA has issued a warning against skin whitening injectable products, stating that it could cause disease, infection, or serious injury. But products are still popping up all over the internet, ready to ship to your door in just a few days. Could these injections be a DIY disaster waiting to happen? Uh, our good friend, Dr. Sonia Batra, joins us, and clearly our audience has some strong opinions on this. So first of all, what, what is glutathione? So glutathione is actually a really powerful antioxidant made in the body, but the way it works to lighten skin in this context is it actually blocks the enzyme tyrosinase, which allows you to lay down pigment. And because it's such a powerful antioxidant, it actually quenches the free radicals and oxidative damage caused by UV in the sun that would otherwise trigger pigment production. With the injections then, mm -hmm. is, is it just happening all over their body? Are people able to just lighten their whole body or do you have to put it in a specific area? Or? So no, no, because of the way it works, mm -hmm. it's actually you inject it and there's some really interesting data out of Asia which shows that the most effective form is IV and it does work to lighten the skin. But the big problem with these do-it-yourself kits is that they're not FDA approved at all in the United States. Sure. So you're basically getting these things that could be counterfeit, they could be contaminated, they could be sources of infection and then you have people who aren't trained to inject them. So is it being used primarily for these medical conditions? And because I, I worry about it because you know how we are in this country. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Glutathione, yeah. oh my gosh, I got to get my hands on that. Yeah. Um, and so it worries me, but, it, but is this being done in a way where you feel like if it does come here to the U.S., it's going to be done appropriately? Um, well, so it's already being recommended off-label. It's a dietary supplement, so you right. can get it safely in the U.S. as an antioxidant dietary supplement. And it is recommended for melasma, which is a pigment disorder that women can get often during pregnancy mm -hmm. where they get patchy hyperpigmentation. So it does help. So it definitely, but the oral forms of it aren't as well absorbed as any sort of an injection or an IV. It's but I, I am sensitive to your question because there's this aspect of using it for medical changes to the skin. And then there's an ethical and a social overlay as to, well, what's your ultimate intent? Why are you trying to lighten the skin? And is it appropriate to use it in that so context? So it's sounding like then there's no topical application. Then. No, You can't no. just rub it on your... No, it, so it's not really okay. a lightening cream. But we do know because of the way it works, we think, in terms of inhibiting the enzyme that lays down pigment, that it would be an overall effect. So if I came into the, the office for a practitioner who actually did this, maybe I was in Asia, and mm -hmm. they gave me the IV... I could end up as light as Travis, is that? Well, probably not. I mean, like, is this, this <laughs> so, what we're talking about so here? we're not, no, no, no. And even when you look at the really randomized, well-controlled trials coming out of the Philippines and elsewhere in the world, you're not seeing that dramatic effect. I see. But the photos are striking. It's not going to take you from, you know, three shades lighter or four shades lighter. And that's why people are doing it. And but also remember, effects? the effect is temporary. And so I think for viewers watching, the takeaway for you might be that, look, if you are suffering, say, from melasma. I'm um, suffering from melasma. You know, and, and <laughs> well, and this, may, this is an opportunity, is it not? Yeah. To have a discussion, have a discussion with someone who knows it, what they're talking about? Then I'm worried, though, if I, if I took it for my melasma, which for those of you watching who don't know what this is, I, I have like a stripe here and a stripe here, you know, all for pregnancy and hormones. But if I did take it, then now all of a sudden, you just don't I'm look like me. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. then I start to get pale, too. So it doesn't just. It's not going to just lighten my 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 stripes. Yeah. Well, but do you it's remember it's not that strong. Like you, it, it will lighten you a little bit overall. <laughs> but we're not talking. I mean, if it were that effective, I'm sure it'd be far more abused and, and widely. But so but it, it yeah, it's it's not as impressive. But it does work. It's an adjunct. And even when they're talking yeah. about using it for melasma, it's usually in combination with other therapies as well. Come back for season so. nine. I've got a tan. <laughs> right. Rachel is pale as a ghost. Like oh. Exactly. <laughs> you know. What happened here? <laughs> And I so, promise you, I'll still be ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, you know what? This is really good information. This is really good stuff. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> and, and certainly, when it comes to glutathione, a lot more to learn. But if you are interested, I, I would suggest talking with someone who knows what they're doing, like a Dr. Badra, before you start taking this as a supplement. Let's see what's coming up next.